In this video, the first in a series of two, the role of Eddington Finkelstein coordinates in removing the coordinate singularity in the Schwarzschild geometry is investigated. This is achieved by using the ingoing geodesics of the Schwarzschild geometry to create new coordinates that result in a new line element that is free of this coordinate singularity. So the Schwarzschild coordinates, TR, theta and phi, and their associated line element is this object here, and it's defined or continuous in the region between R is just out, outside the Schwarzschild radius and up to infinity, but not at the Schwarzschild radius. It's also discontinuous at R equals zero, and also at this value here, the Schwarzschild radius itself, this becomes singular. So it's singular at R equals zero and at the, this value here with the latter being a coordinate singularity only and not a physical one. So we can search for better coordinates by probing the space-time with geodesics. Now if a geodesic exists in one coordinate system, it will be valid in all other coordinate systems. So the geodesic of a radially ingoing photon in Schwarzschild coordinates is this here, and we found this in a previous video, I think it might be video number 9 in the series on the Schwarzschild geodesics. I can't remember offhand for sure. And now, all right, so let's start by using the integration constant above, this one here, as our new coordinate. And this is one way to get started. And denoted by the letter U, and this is known as the advanced time parameter. And so we have U equals constant. And this is a null coordinate since the U equals the differential of the constant at zero. And that will imply that if we're holding R, theta, and phi constant, then ds squared will be zero. Now this leads to the coordinate u being, just rearranging this, calling this u, and then taking all of this over the other side, we get ct plus r plus this object here, constant times the log of this object. Now let's take the differentiable of this variable, du, and we get du is cdt plus dr plus this object here. Next stage then is to tidy it up a little bit more, cancel out the c squares here. We've got this object here in our common denominator. We'll add our fractions here. We'll notice that this numerator here will cancel this one here. or well, this part of the numerator here will cancel this one here. So we're left with c squared r over this object. And a little bit of factorizing puts it in the form of du is c dt plus 1 over this object here, dr. Next step. Rearrange that to get c dt by itself and du on the right here, along with all of this. And then we take c squared dt squared, and you'll see why shortly. But when we do that, we get du squared here, minus this object here, and plus this term on the end here, simply squaring the difference of these terms. Then substituting into the Schwarzschild metric, which is this object here, if we then substitute c squared dt squared, which is c squared dt squared, this object here, and then substitute that just in there, here we are. This factor here times all of this plus the end of the Schwarzschild metric. Keep going, and then we get this object here, which is this. Tidy it up a little bit more, and we come down to this result here. And so our new line element is this object here. ds squared is all of this. Now this line element has removed the coordinate singularity at r equals the at the Schwarzschild radius to gm and c squared and is now defined in the region from beyond zero, just over, just uh, above zero, up to infinity. So the only singularity this object now has is at r equals zero. It doesn't have the Schwarzschild singularity at this r equals 2 gm on c squared, which isn't a real singularity, it's merely just a result of the choice of coordinates, the Schwarzschild coordinates. It's not a real sing physical singularity, it's only a coordinate one. Now for radial motion photons of photons, sorry, in the equatorial plane, we're concerned with d theta and d phi as zero. And we also have the uh, distance covered by light ds is zero as well. So the ds squared will be zero for light. And solving for that, we're going to have here this object, du squared plus 2 du dr divide through by dr squared, and we'll have this object here, take out a common factor of du dr, 
and then we'll have the non-factor law applies here. This object times what's in the brackets is equal to zero. So our two solutions are corresponding to an ingoing and outgoing radial null geodesics are DUDR of zero, the one factor here, and that implies U is constant, which we know is valid because that's how we constructed this to begin with. But the second solution, DUDR, is equal to this object here, which is inside the brackets here. We set that equal to zero, take two over the other side, then solve for DUDR, and we have this object here. Now if we uh, integrate that to find the solution, we get U, our advanced time parameter is 2r plus 4gm on c squared, this object here, plus the constant. Now, let's define a time-like coordinate, t prime, t dash, in the form that c t dash is u minus r. And this particular choice just works, as you'll see shortly. And that's its reason for using it. Just notice from u we're subtracting something which has a the uh, dimensions of distance and c, c times time. It also has the dimensions of distance. And we have c t prime is u minus r, gives us c t plus r plus this object here minus r, and then the r's cancel out and we're left with this object here. So c t prime is equal to c t plus this object here, and, and notice that c t prime has distance. These right hand side here has dimensions of distance as well, so it's correct that way. Let's just rearrange that and take this right hand term here over to the left hand side. We'll get ct by itself and we have ct prime minus this object here. And then let's find the differential of this. So we have cdt is cdt prime minus this object here dr. Cancel out the c squares. Let's do a little bit of tidying up here and factorizing. cdt prime minus 2gm on c squared 1 on r. We're going to out the factor of r there. Notice the c squareds and the c squareds have gone here. And then we'll pull out this factor 1 on r and will give us this object here. Okay, and that leaves us with c dt prime minus all of this. And we'll see how this is used shortly. Alright, now we square both sides. So we get c squared dt squared is equal to c squared dt prime squared minus this object here plus this object here. Alright. Our next stage is to take this in our in the Schwarzschild metric, like we did earlier, and replace c squared dt squared with all of this. So going to the Schwarzschild metric, ds squared is this object here, and in here we're going to put all of this. So let's put it in little square brackets here to show you where it, where I inserted it. Here it is, plus this bit here, plus the end bit here, and then. Next bit over, the rest is going to be some algebra now and tidying up of terms, expanding out. We've got all of this. We've multiplied through by this factor here. We're left with this. Next thing here is we're going to now use difference of perfect squares because we're going to factorize out this factor here and this factor here. We'll take that outside. And we've got dr squared, dr squared. We'll also take that out. So this whole thing will be factored out and we'll have this. 1 squared minus this square of all of this here times the factor we've taken out because it's really this times that and this times that. That's how we've got this term here and this term here. And the end bit here, of course, the angular part. And then come down here, the next bit here, we'll expand all that throughout. And notice here from the difference of perfect squares. 1 squared minus all of this squared is, can be expressed in this factor form here, times this. Now, this factor and this factor will cancel, and then we'll be left with a line element like this. Here we go. So it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms in it. And let's just go over here and see what we've achieved. Okay, so our new line element is this object here. And notice it's continuous in the region between r is greater than zero and less than infinity. We've removed the um, coordinate singularity of the Schwarzschild radius, which is what the Schwarzschild metric had. We now have this new metric here. And we have this new metric in the advanced Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, t prime, r, theta, and phi. And one thing to notice, though, is that this line element is not invariant with 
respect to the transformation, T prime is replaced with minus T prime. So under time reversal, this is not under time reversal. This this is not invariant. Right? Just I mean, we'll see some consequences of that in the next video. So from earlier, we've got U equals constant is one solution, and we've got U equals this object here. So our next step now is, given that C T prime is U minus R, where U is constant and U is this object here, we have the ingoing and outgoing radial null photon geodesics. C T prime is constant minus R, or minus R plus a constant, put it in that lovely high school form of gradient intercept form. And we also have C T prime is this object here. Subtract the R and we're left up with this object here. So we have an ingoing geodesic, this one, and an outgoing geodesic, this one. Next step. Let's plot the ingoing geodesics. Remember that was minus R plus a constant. And notice here that this, the ingoing geodesics are now continuous across the Schwarzschild radius here. There's no singularity here now. We've removed it. And these geodesics are continuous. They simply cross the Schwarzschild radius. There's no break there at all. So it's continuous up to, uh, but obviously not quite r equals zero. <coughs> it's continuous at r equals zero, where there's a true physical singularity. That's the ingoing geodesics. The outgoing geodesics here, here there's, they're still discontinuous at the Schwarzschild radius here, the red line here. And we have the outgoing here, outside the Schwarzschild radius, and then within the Schwarzschild radius. Next step, let's put them all together so this is what they look like. And then ingoing and outgoing, and that allows us to have now a look at the local light cone, as we can see out here in flat space, far from the Schwarzschild radius, and approaching asymptotically approaching flat space. We have our light cones looking like this. As we move in now closer, they close up. And then across the Schwarzschild radius, we notice that the light cones tip over towards so the particle, meaning that the particle's future destination is the coordinate singularity at r equals zero, and that anything crossing this uh, Schwarzschild radius here continues on into the singularity. It has no choice in that. Um, the current light cones increasingly tip over rapidly, and the, the particle photon or particle with mass must end up with the singularity r equals zero. That's its only future possible destination. All right, so we began with the Schwarzschild coordinates tr, theta, and phi, and its line element. Here we are, which is which had a physical singularity r equals zero, but it also has the coordinate singularity of two gm on c squared, r equals two gm on c squared, where this became undefined. We've now removed that singularity. And by using advanced Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, t prime r theta phi, the Schwarzschild coordinate singularity has been removed uh, from the line element, which is now continuous. And the new line element in advanced Eddington Finkelstein coordinates is this object here, which has still has the um, physical singularity r equals zero, a real singularity, but it doesn't have the coordinate one. Now this line element is defined in this region here. Right, now the event horizon of the Schwarzschild radius r equals still remains, as can be seen by the tipping over the light cones as the photons or particles cross this boundary. You can see that. And the, the, the light cones are directed towards the singularity, and that's the only possible. So the ingoing geodesics are continuous across this boundary, and so matter and energy can move inwards. It can only move inwards, and you can see from the, the light cones how they point towards the singularity. All right, so the outgoing geodesics are discontinuous to the Schwarzschild radius, and so matter and energy cannot move outwards across this boundary. Any particle crossing this boundary cannot return and must continue on to the singularity at r equals zero. So no particle with mass or photon in the region r less than 2 gm and c squared, the Schwarzschild radius can ever cross this boundary and move to the right of the Schwarzschild radius.